This video is brought to you by Miracle Made. Go to trymiracle.com slash Dan and use promo code Dan to get a special offer and stay tuned after the episode for more info. Hello, everybody. I'm Dan Merle here with a look at the winners from the 2024 Cannes Film Festival. This is usually the spot occupied by Charts with Dan, but because we have the long Memorial Day weekend here in the U.S., and it's a very close box office race between Garfield and Furiosa, even though it's a very disappointing box office weekend overall, I'm going to do Charts with Dan tomorrow when we have some of the four-day numbers for Friday through Monday. And I also just wanted to look at a lot of these movies in Cannes because since 2019, with the exception of 2020, where there was no film festival, at least one Best Picture nominee at the Academy Awards has come from the main competition at Cannes. This past year, of course, we had Anatomy of a Fall, which won the top prize, the Palme d'Or. The Zone of Interest was another Best Picture nominee that competed at Cannes last year. In 2022, Best Picture nominee Triangle of Sadness won the Palme d'Or before going on to be nominated for Best Picture. In 2021, Drive My Car was in competition at Cannes. And then in 2019, Parasite won the Palme d'Or and, of course, went on to win Best Picture and several other Academy Awards. So in a world that is embracing international cinema more and more, there are some big awards and Oscar ramifications from a lot of the movies that are competing in the main competition for that Palme d'Or, which is awarded by a jury every year. This year, the Cannes jury included names like Greta Gerwig, Lily Gladstone, J.A. Biona, Ava Green, and Omar Sy. And the Palme d'Or winner was a film called Anora, which was written and directed by Sean Baker, whose last film was 2021's Red Rocket. That garnered a lot of critical attention. He's probably best known as the director of The Florida Project, which landed Willem Dafoe an Academy Award nomination for Best Supporting Actor several years ago. Sean Baker also directed Tangerine, one of my favorite films back in 2015, which was famously shot on an iPhone. Anora stars Mikey Madison, best known perhaps for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and 2022 Scream, as a sex worker who gets romantically involved with the son of an oligarch who disapproves of the situation. I've seen it described as a mad cap and yet intense comedy or perhaps dark comedy and the response coming out of can even before it won the palm d'or was incredibly positive anora winning the palm d'or is of course a big win for sean baker and everybody involved in the movie but it's also a big win for the distributor neon because this becomes now the fifth palm d'or winner at can in a row to be picked up for u.s distribution by neon they previously distributed anatomy of a fall triangle of sadness parasite and titan and with the exception of Titan, which was a little too out there and divisive for a lot of mainstream awards voters. The other three films were all nominated for Best Picture, Best Director, and Best Original Screenplay, with Anatomy of a Fall winning the Academy Award for Best Original Screenplay and Parasite winning all three of those Academy Awards. By virtue of that history, Anora has to be put on the radar in all three of those Oscar races, as well as in the Best Actress race for Mikey Madison, and it also looks like it's one of those films that's just going to be a must-see for people that are interested in indie film, international film, and in the award circuit. This is one of those movies that should be at the top of your list and for you to be on the lookout because I think people are going to be talking about it a lot later on in the year. The Grand Prix, which is essentially second place, went to a movie called All We Imagine as Light, a film out of India about two nurses who go on a road trip and have unexpected experiences. It's from director Payal Kapadia. Last year's Grand Prix winner was The Zone of Interest, which also became a major awards and Oscar contender and multiple winner. This is a category that in recent years has generated a lot of movies that were either nominated for the Best International Feature Academy Award or made the 15 film shortlist to be nominated for Best International Feature. Those movies include The Zone of Interest, Close, Compartment Number 6, A Hero, and Atlantic's Janus Films, which handled distribution for Drive My Car, which was a surprise nominee in a lot of Oscar categories, will be distributing the film here in the U.S. The Jury Prize, essentially a form of honorable mention and recognition, went to Emilia Perez from director Jacques Odiard, a veteran of Cannes who's directed several movies with international acclaim, including Rust and Bone and A Prophet. Emilia Perez is about a lawyer who's asked to help a cartel member escape from a life of crime in order to transition from a man to a woman, and the cast includes Zoe Saldana, Selena Gomez, and Edgar Ramirez. Emilia Perez also accomplished a rare feat in winning a joint prize for Best Actress for its four lead women, Carla Sofia Gascon, Zoe Saldana, Selena Gomez, and Adriana Paz. 
The last time an ensemble was awarded Best Actress at Cannes was back in 2006 for Pedro Almodovar's film Volver, and eventually Penelope Cruz would go on to get a Best Actress nomination for that film. However, the correlation's not very strong between Best Actress winners at Cannes and Best Actress nominees at the Academy Awards. Penelope Cruz is actually the last Best Actress winner at the Cannes Film Festival to go on and get that Oscar nomination, but you never know. These things can repeat, and it could happen again. Emilia Perez is the kind of film that should see a big award season push, and with Netflix picking up distribution in the U.S., you can expect a hefty awards presence. All of its leads, I think, are going to be pushed as potential acting contenders. The jury prize has been given to underground awards contenders in the past, like EO, Fallen Leaves, The Lobster, and the French drama Les Miserables, which famously was chosen over Portrait of a Lady on Fire as France's submission for Best International Feature. So this is a movie that you can expect to be a mainstay in the critical and awards conversation, and I think an outside shot at being a major contender. In the Best Actor race, Jesse Plemons picked up the prize for Yorgos Lanthimos' latest film, Kinds of Kindness, which is being released in the U.S. by Searchlight next month. The film was generally well-received, though not as rapturously as Poor Things was last year. I'm just really super happy for Jesse Plemons. He is one of those actors that just seems to bring a change of pace to every single movie that he's in, whether it's a comedy or a drama or whatever. He's just somebody that I like seeing on screen. It's crazy to have watched him all those years back in Friday Night Lights and to see his progression as an actor over those years. He can also add his best actor prize to the mantle at home alongside his wife, Kirsten Dunst, best actress prize for Melancholia at the Cannes Film Festival. That is one talented household. As far as a correlation between Best Actor wins at Cannes and a Best Actor win at the Academy Awards, the last actor to do it was Antonio Banderas in Pedro Almodovar's Pain and Glory. Before that, you have to go back about a decade to Bruce Dern in Nebraska, so it doesn't really happen that often, but Yorgos Lanthimos is an Oscar favorite. The Oscars love the guy. Of course, Poor Things just won a bunch of awards last year. I think we're going to know a lot more next month when Kinds of Kindness opens, and we'll see if it's able to generate that kind of buzz, and if Plemons' performance is able to generate that kind of buzz. He's already been nominated once for The Power of the Dog, so he is somebody who's on that awards radar, but we're somewhat early in the year, so this is one of those things that's just going to have to progress over time. This is still one of my most anticipated films of the year, because I just love Yorgos Lanthimos. Apparently, this is an anthology film, so Plemons plays three different roles throughout. It might not be great, but it sounds like it's at least going to be different and interesting, and I'm on board for that. The Best Director Prize went to Portuguese filmmaker Miguel Gomez for Grand Tour, which he also co-wrote. It's about a groom who flees his bride on their wedding day in 1910s Burma and her search to bring him back. The film's generated mostly positive reviews, but of all the awards, the Cannes Prize for Best Director is one of the least correlated for the Academy Awards. Even Bong Joon-ho didn't win Best Director at Cannes the year that Parasite won the Palme d'Or because usually the jury likes to spread the love. They like to spread the prizes around. But when you go back and look at the movies that have won for their directing, we're talking about movies like Decision to Leave, Annette, which is my favorite movie the year that it came out, Personal Shopper, and Drive. I think that makes Grand Tour something to note for people that just love movies that are interesting and unique. Aside from the awards conversation, when you look at the list of Best Director winners, all of those movies have a lot of worthwhile things to bring to the table. The prize for Best Screenplay went to writer-director Coralie Farge, whose last film was Revenge, a top 10 movie for me back in 2017. This year, the movie's called The Substance, which has been described as a body horror film about a woman played by Demi Moore, who begins taking a substance that allows her to be younger. The film also stars Margaret Qualley and Dennis Quaid, who stepped in to replace Ray Liotta after he unfortunately passed away. Drive My Car, Portrait of a Lady on Fire, You Were Never Really Here, and The Killing of the Sacred Deer, all movies that I really liked or loved have won this prize in the last decade and combined with the fact that I really really liked Revenge, the substance has now also moved up near the top of the movies that I really want to see that are coming out later this year. The substance is also generating a lot of buzz for Demi Moore with many hailing it as her comeback role. If awards voters can overcome the reportedly extreme nature of the film this could be the kind of underdog comeback narrative that the Academy Awards love and Demi 
me more is an actress who has a lot of goodwill in Hollywood, but not somebody who has a long and extensive resume of being nominated for Oscars. So that's something to keep an eye on because that is the kind of story that awards voters love and Demi Moore could very well be setting herself up for a big awards push at the end of the year. A special prize for best screenplay went to The Seed of the Sacred Fig from writer-director Mohammad Rasulov, who fled a prison sentence in Iran shortly before the festival and was able to make it to France. The Seed of the Sacred Fig was considered a favorite to win the Palme d'Or going into the final weekend of Cannes before the winners were revealed, and that may be why the jury decided to award it this special prize for screenwriting, so it still got some of that big Cannes Award recognition. The movie is about a lawyer turned judge in Iran who feels pressured by his country's legal system and threatened by violence and the participation of his wife and daughters in protests against Iran's treatment of women. This is a film to keep an eye on in the best international feature race, and it could possibly even be a feature that could cross over into the screenplay race, like Asghar Farhadi's A Separation did back in 2012. So those are the major award winners in Cannes, but there were also a number of other high-profile films that were in competition for the Palme d'Or. One of them is The Apprentice, which is director Ali Abbasi's movie following Donald Trump as a young man, starting his career with Sebastian Stan playing Trump and Jeremy Strong as his lawyer, Roy Cohn. The movie's already courted controversy and has been targeted by Trump's legal team. Should the movie gain traction, take advantage of this notoriety and be well-received, we could see a big push for Sebastian Stan and Jeremy Strong in the acting categories, as well as for Maria Bakalova, already an Academy Award nominee, who plays Ivana Trump in the film. The movie Bird was also in competition at Cannes. This is director Andrea Arnold's latest film about a young girl living with her single father. It's generated some buzz around Barry Keoghan's performance. Perhaps some awards voters will want to reward him after he was not nominated last year for Saltburn. One of the biggest movies and the biggest stories around Cannes was Megalopolis, which is Francis Ford Coppola's latest film. He has been on a continuing quest to get distribution for the movie, which cost over $100 million. Reactions were all over the place, which sounds to me like this is an interesting movie, but not one that's likely to get the $100 million price plus $100 million marketing budget that Coppola has supposedly been asking for. Coppola was able to secure distribution in some international markets, and the film will also be shown on a select number of screens in IMAX here in the U.S. this fall, regardless of who eventually picks up those rights, if anybody picks up those rights. So it will be seen, but that's not what Coppola wants. He wants this to be pushed like any other major tentpole. I don't know if that's going to happen, but I do know that I really, really want to see this movie. It looks insane. Apparently there was, at Cannes, a live action element where there's an actor that goes up on stage and speaks to Adam Driver's character on screen at some point. So are they going to try to replicate that for the theatrical experience? I'm not really sure. I don't know if this movie's going to be good or not, but it is from Francis Ford Coppola. And what kind of madness did he pull out of his head and spend over $100 million of his own money on? I have to know. The Most Precious of Cargos is an animated film from Oscar-winning director of the artist Michel Hazanavisius. It's about a young girl who's thrown from a train headed to Auschwitz who must survive in the woods. Given the animated medium and the subject matter, it's a good bet that this could be a factor in the best animated feature race. Two other notable directors also debuted films in competition at the Cannes Film Festival, although it's unlikely there'll be major awards contenders. One of them is O Canada from Paul Schrader about a dying writer looking back on his life, it debuted to generally positive reaction. The cast includes Richard Gere, Jacob Elordi, Uma Thurman, and Michael Imperioli. And David Cronenberg debuted his latest film called The Shrouds, about a man who invents a camera that allows you to watch your deceased loved ones in their burial shrouds and who later seeks out a group of grave vandals. It got a more mixed reception, and the film's cast includes Guy Pearce, Vincent Cassell, and Diane Kruger. So those are the bullet points from Cannes, although there were many, many other films that screened in competition for the Palme d'Or and in the several other competitions that happened at Cannes. What do you think, though? What are the movies that you heard about here that excite you? Are there other movies that I didn't talk about that you want to see? Let me know down in the comments below. And before we go, I want to thank the sponsor for this video. This episode is brought to you by Miracle Made. Memorial Day has officially marked the beginning of summer, which also means warmer temperatures. And if you're a hot sleeper like me, that can also mean some sweaty nights adjusting to the heat. But with Miracle Made sheets, you don't have to worry about that because their silver infused fabrics inspired by NASA 
are temperature regulating so you can get that all important good night's sleep without waking up drenched in sweat. You're also not sacrificing comfort for a comfortable temperature because Miracle Made sheets are incredibly soft, as good as you'll get at some of the best hotels in the world. And you don't have to worry about washing the sheets constantly to stay cool because Miracle Made sheets also prevent 99.7% of bacterial growth, keeping them fresh three times longer than other sheets. Go to trymiracle.com slash Dan to try Miracle Made sheets today. And whether you're buying them for yourself or as a gift for a loved one, if you order today, you can save over 40%. And if you use our promo code Dan at checkout, you'll get three free towels and save an extra 20%. Miracle's so confident in their product, it's backed with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so if you aren't 100% satisfied, you'll get a full refund. Upgrade your sleep with Miracle Made. Go to trymiracle.com slash Dan and use the code Dan to claim your free three-piece towel set and save over 40% off. Again, that's trymiracle.com slash Dan to treat yourself. Thanks to Miracle Made for sponsoring this video and thank you for watching. Be sure to stay tuned right here. I'll be back tomorrow morning with Charts with Dan as we look back at a very disappointing Memorial Day weekend at the box office. And of course, I'll be right here with movie news, reviews, all that kind of stuff. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, stay safe and I'll see you then. Bye.